Welcome to Certification Terminal, your ultimate destination for all certifications. We are thrilled to have you here. Today, we're diving into another video of ISACA CISA Certification Practice Exam Series. Let's dive in. Question number one. What is the primary concern when an IS auditor chooses a server for a penetration test to be conducted by a technical specialist? Option A, permission from the data owner of the server. Option B, the tools used to conduct the test. Option C, certifications held by the IS auditor. Option D, an intrusion detection system is enabled. The correct answer is. Option A, permission from the data owner of the server. Before conducting any penetration test, it's crucial to obtain explicit permission from the owner of the server or the organization responsible for its security. Penetration testing involves deliberate attempts to exploit vulnerabilities, which could potentially disrupt services or compromise sensitive data. Without proper authorization, such activities could be illegal and may result in legal consequences for the auditor and the organization. Question number two. What risk analysis technique involves evaluating the potential impact and likelihood of identified risks by leveraging expert judgment and historical data? Option A, Delphi technique. Option B, Monte Carlo simulation. Option C, quantitative risk analysis. Option D, qualitative risk analysis. The correct answer is. Option D, qualitative risk analysis. This technique involves assessing risks based on subjective criteria, such as expert judgment and historical data. It doesn't involve precise numerical values, but rather uses qualitative descriptors like low, medium, or high to evaluate the likelihood and impact of risks. Expert judgment is essential in this method to gauge the relative significance of risks and their potential consequences based on experience and knowledge. Historical data provides insights into past occurrences of similar risks helping to inform the analysis. Question number three. What should be the subsequent action for the IS auditor upon finding that not all critical systems are included in a disaster recovery plan audit for a critical business area? Option A, verify whether the systems are part of the business impact analysis. Option B, escalate the finding to senior management. Option C. Evaluate the prior year's audit results regarding critical system coverage. Option D. Evaluate the impact of not covering the systems. The correct answer is. Option B. Escalate the finding to senior management. This is the most crucial step because missing critical systems in a DRP for a critical business area is a significant control weakness. Senior management needs to be aware of this issue to prioritize its correction and ensure business continuity in case of a disaster. Question number four. What is the primary objective of testing incident response plans among the options provided? Option A, areas requiring investment are identified. Option B, internal procedures are improved. Option C, an action plan is available for senior management. Option D, staff is educated about current threats. The correct answer is. Option A, areas requiring investment are identified. The primary objective of testing incident response plans is to identify areas where additional resources or investments are needed to strengthen the organization's ability to respond to cybersecurity incidents effectively. This includes identifying gaps in technology, personnel, training, and other resources necessary for an effective response. Identifying areas requiring investment ensures that the organization can prioritize resources to address those weaknesses and make the plan more effective in real-world situations. Question number five. What components are typically present in a network vulnerability assessment as expected by an IS auditor? Option A, misconfiguration in missing updates. Option B, malicious software and spyware. Option C, security design flaws. Option D, zero-day vulnerabilities. The correct answer is. Option A, misconfiguration in missing updates. 
In a network vulnerability assessment, identifying misconfigurations in network devices, servers, or applications, as well as detecting missing security updates and patches, are common objectives. These vulnerabilities can expose the network to potential security threats and need to be identified and remediated to enhance overall security posture. Question number 6. When assessing the effectiveness of controls, which option among the following is the most advantageous for an IS auditor? Option A, a control matrix. Option B, interviews with management. Option C, a control self-assessment. Option D, results of control testing. The correct answer is. Option D, results of control testing. Control testing involves assessing the operation and effectiveness of controls through various methods such as observation, inspection, and re-performance. By directly testing controls, an IS auditor can obtain empirical evidence regarding their effectiveness in mitigating risks and achieving control objectives. Results of control testing provide tangible evidence of control performance, allowing auditors to make informed judgments about control effectiveness. Question number 7. What indicates the highest degree of harmony between an organization's IT strategy and its business objectives among the options provided? Option A, the IT strategy is modified in response to organizational changes. Option B, the IT strategy has significant impact on the business strategy. Option C, the IT strategy is based on IT operational best practices. Option D, the IT strategy is approved by executive management. The correct answer is. Option B, the IT strategy has significant impact on the business strategy. This option indicates a strong alignment between the IT strategy and business objectives. When the IT strategy has a significant impact on the overall business strategy, it demonstrates that IT initiatives and decisions are closely tied to the organization's overarching goals and objectives. This alignment ensures that IT investments and efforts are directed towards supporting and enhancing business outcomes. Question number 8. As certification terminal begins, its implementation of the Enterprise Governance of Information and Technology Framework, what stands out as the primary objective for the organization? Option A, IT value realization. Option B, aligning IT with the business. Option C, accountability. Option D, IT investments return enhancement. The correct answer is. Option B, aligning IT with the business. Aligning IT with the business is often considered the primary objective of implementing an enterprise governance framework, such as EGIT. By aligning IT initiatives, strategies, and investments with the overall business objectives and priorities, organizations can ensure that IT functions as an enabler for achieving business goals. Question number 9. What is the primary step in managing the risk associated with a cyber attack? Option A. Assess the vulnerability impact. Option B. Evaluate the likelihood of threats. Option C. Identify critical information assets. Option D. Estimate potential damage. The correct answer is. Option C. Identify critical information assets. Identifying critical information assets is the primary step in managing the risk associated with a cyber attack. Critical assets are those that are essential for the operation of the organization and are likely to be targeted by attackers. Once these assets are identified, appropriate security measures can be implemented to protect them from cyber threats. Question number 10. Among the firewall types, what is the defining characteristic of a proxy firewall? Option A, circuit level. Option B, sixth generation. Option C, intrusion detection. Option D, packet filter. The correct answer is. Option A, circuit level. A proxy firewall operates at the session layer of the OSI model and mediates communication between two network devices by acting as an intermediary. It establishes separate network connections for each communication session thereby hiding the true network addresses of the communicating parties. This approach allows the proxy firewall to inspect and filter traffic more thoroughly than packet filtering firewalls, which operate at lower layers of the OSI model. Therefore, the defining characteristic of a proxy firewall 
is its operation at the circuit level, which enables enhanced security features such as content filtering and application layer inspection. Thanks for watching. We'll meet you in the next video.